one of the major problems that I've observed. Um, your work, and you have said consistently you think the way that this problem will be resolved is victims of racism codifying everything. And I, I've heard non-white people who are familiar with your work, and they have expressed confusion about what exactly codification is. And I wanted you, before you explain it so we can try and clear some of that confusion up, I just wondered if you could offer your views on why black people are confused, why we have a difficult time grasping exactly what codification means. Oh, well, codification is just a way of getting things done. There, there's a code for everything, uh, <clears throat> plumbing codes, electrical codes, fire codes. Uh, the word code is used a lot, and you can just look at the way that uh, different people use the word code. Uh, a marine code, uh, you know, they, they say that they do certain things a certain way, they have a certain order for doing things. Uh, plumbing, electrical, uh, woodwork, zoning codes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Just a way of getting things done. Now, there are lots of ways to do anything, but I think the way that codes came into being was that people start studying, maybe through the process of elimination, they'd say, well, there might be seven ways to solve a problem. You know, after people gather around a table, maybe, and try to figure out how to solve a problem. And then they'll say, well, after in-depth study, we came up with seven or maybe 30 ways, I mean, to approach a problem, uh, the solution to a problem. And then they, what you call brainstorm it. That's what they have sometimes in what they call think tanks. And in colleges and whatnot, uh, people just gather together and um, uh, try to figure out the best way to approach a problem that keeps coming up. That, you know, that they hear about and whatnot in the general social order, you might say. So they, what you call, and using slang terms, brainstorm. Brainstorm that problem. Everybody will have some input in it, saying, well, maybe if we do this and we do that, and then someone from across the table will say, well, no, if we do it that way, uh, the result will be uh, such and such. And uh, so they're, trying to, they're trying to figure out a way, the best way to build a, a dam, maybe and they want to go about doing it. So it's just a way to get things done. And so finally, after a, a short or long discussion, maybe it might take hours, it might take days, it might take years, but finally they might come up with, say, out of 30 different approaches, they'll say now, well, we'll finally settle on maybe three different ways out of the 30 to, uh, to approach this thing. And so out of the three, Let's turn it over and over and over and over until we can come up with maybe one that would be better than the other two. Out of the three that we find to settle on after four years of study. And this is how I imagine the best codes for getting things done come into being. Just through the process of saying, you know, how how many different ways it to, to go about solving this problem and no one has an answer initially but if they keep at it and keep at it and keep at it through persistence and focus and being honest being truthful no one letting their egos get in the way and whatnot if they're really serious about solving the problem then they probably can come up with an approach where well we finally settle on out of the three number two would be the best way to go about doing it, according to theory anyway. So what we'll do is now run tests on our theory to see if it'll hold up. And by trial and error and whatnot, and that left the three, and so by uh, the sampling process, they finally decide, well, yes, number two is really it, because every time we do number two, it seems to work. Maybe some uh, exceptions, but for the most part, number two out of the three 
that we came up with out of eight years of your study, number two seems to work best. So I'm just giving a sort of a hypothetical illustration of how you come about building a code. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think it's self-explanatory and explains why we always seem to have debates with uh, the show me the plan people, you know, what's the yeah. plan? What's the plan? You know, if you don't really understand systemically what racism, white supremacy is, then you consistently fall for traps that keep us in uh, wrapped up in, you know, uh, circular politics that never, or I guess we call it hamster wheel politics that never mm -hmm. move us forward. And, you know, we might work hard, but at the end of the day, we're not moving. And, when you look at what, what, what racism, white supremacy truly is and how it functions, it's not an individual thing. It's a systemic uh, group thing. Yeah, it's a systemic group thing, but it's also a play on power and domination, manifested destiny, you know, okay. eminent domain. All these things factor in to racism, white supremacy, you know, layered and layered and layers of, of, of laws and politics and policy that are in place to to maintain the dominance of this society of white supremacy. A lot of people get into the name play and talk about, well, I don't think they're supreme to us. And, you know, when you right. talk about white supremacy, that must mean you feel inferior to them. Right. There's nothing to do with that. This is a system of dominance. And if you can't see that they're dominating us in every aspect of it, I don't know what the hell you're looking at. Some benefits to the system of white supremacy racism through the use of six major racist strategies for confusion. Keyword confusion. Providing weapons to non-white people in situations where they are most likely to use those weapons against each other. Killing non-white people after saying those non-white people were planning to do not just harm to white people or to other non-white people. Poisoning animals, the air, water, land, food, etc. in the areas where selected non-white people reside. Providing harmful drugs, chemicals to non-white people and often doing so in a manner that is deceptive, sometimes under the guise of being helpful. Spreading disease germs among non-white people both directly and indirectly. Causing or promoting shortages among the non-white people of needed Food, water, shelter, medicines, transportation, the ability to protect against the non just aggression, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. I am continuing my review of the compensatory code or the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept, a compensatory counter racist code. A textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy by Neely Fuller Jr. And we're looking at the code of white supremacy or looking further into codes of conduct and being codified and why people need to have a code of conduct, why people need to be codified, why a compensatory code needs to exist because of the existence of white supremacy. We're going to break down what a compensatory code is why the codes uh, need to exist. All the aspects of the codes of being codified are also taking a look at some of the codes that the white supremacists use to help the refinement and the continuance of white supremacy. And so he gave, we, we, we're, I'm starting on chapter 40. I mean, excuse me, I'm starting on page 40 and I, I read from page 40 to page 50 to page 56 so from page 40 to 56 is what we're covering in this video and the next video we'll get into the first area of human activity which is economics but so we're starting off with the benefits of white supremacy and like i read earlier these are benefits to cause confusion and the confusion is all about the maintenance of white supremacy and we're going to get into that a lot later or a lot in this chapter so now we get into the law of compensation and understanding what compensation is and um how the law of compensation relates to racism so let's get into it so it is important to know and understand that the word compensation is at best a word that 
that can be used to describe a compensatory condition that does exist and or a compensatory desire for a condition that does not exist and or has never existed. The rule of the use of the word compensation may or may not promote contradiction and or confusion. For that reason, both the word and the concept of compensation, like all other words and concepts, should be used to reveal truth and produce justice and correctness. And just to make sure we understand compensation, compensation is something else in place because you don't have one thing. So if you don't have, uh, if you have injustice, the compensation would be justice. So you're trying to bring justice. So, um, let me get it. Compensation is law. Compensation is nature. Compensation is law of existence. Compensation is law of mathematics. Compensation is law of laws. Every thought is a compensatory thought. Every word is, is a compensatory word. Every act is a compensatory act. So it's the comp it's something compensating for something that's missing. That's what the compensatory code is. The compensatory code exists because of the absence of the code of justice. There's something in the place of something that's missed this. The code of justice in America or even in the world, let's go broad, the code of justice in the, of justice in the world is missing. So for the non-white people of the world, and that's who this book is written for, the compensation is the compensatory code, a code that we would live by to help us overthrow the system of white supremacy or even get from up under the system of white supremacy or however you want to label it. But it's this code and we're going to get deeper into this code and how this code works. And I even learned something new. How does the law of compensation relate to racism? The difference in treatment between people is always based on the difference in thinking that exists among people. The difference in the thinking among some people sometimes causes differences in the treatment of other people based on size, shape, height, weight, complexion, general state of being, etc. Oftentimes, some people are treated in an unjust manner by other people on the basis of color or on the basis of factors that some people regard as being associated with color or an idea of color. White people are treated unjustly, excuse me, when people are treated unjustly, they are deprived and or denied access to something of value which they are entitled when this happens, it is correct for them to ask for that which they are entitled. When people ask for that which they are entitled and are refused, they are then entitled to compensation. When people ask for compensation from others, they are refused that compensation. They must then acquire compensation for themselves through their own efforts. When people seek to acquire compensation for themselves through their own efforts, they must establish a compensatory system to use a basic rule, a basic guide for thought, speech, action, and or for thought, speech, and action. So, like I said earlier, when injustice is present and the injustice negatively affects us, the group of non-white people, we compensate and, com and create a compensatory code. And that's what Neela Fuller is, is talking about. That's what this whole book is about. Creating a compensatory code, a code to compensate for what is missing. Create that compensatory code. And within that compensatory code, when we all follow that code and abide by that code, especially when that code is rooted in the overthrowing of white supremacy, we should be able to reach a goal. But we're going to learn more about why a compensatory code may exist, but, you know, it's not compensating. So we're going to learn. Uh, it, Neely Fuller, dropping, he dropping gems in this book. So he goes further to say, the needs of all people are best served when their thought, speech, and action is promoted through the adoption of correct compensatory codes. No code, however, should be used to promote falsehood, non-justice, or incorrectness. All codes should be should all codes should help to produce justice and or correctness the best and or correct thing that each person should be taught should be for the basic purpose of helping people to think speak and act effectively to replace the system of white supremacy racism with the system of justice and balance between people what is taught and what is learned should be used to apply to everything that a person says or does in each area of activity including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war counter war.
I'm going to read my favorite part again. What is taught and what is learned should be used to apply to everything that a person says or does in each area of activity. Everything we do, like I said last week, everything we do should be on code and it should be towards the eradication of the system of white supremacy, toward the promotion of this uh, of a system of justice, especially for us. Now, it is on white people to end racism, but it's on us to get ourselves in a position to not be oppressed. And that's what the compensatory code is about overall. It's us not being in a subservient position, us not being second class, us not being under white supremacy, white supremacy not existing. White people not being supreme to us anymore because we are on code and we use this code to spur forward justice and get what we need for ourselves. According to compensatory logic, the basic broad purpose for all studies is to learn how to solve problems without making any. Now, that's hard for us right now. And that's how that's all a part of the confusion of the system of white supremacy. Right. Because it's hard for us to solve problems right now, 2023, without creating problems, because it seems like when groups of people get together and ideas get put on the table, a lot of times a lot of problems arise and the problems can come in various forms and fashions. But problems arise that usually halt the overall real progress of the group. To eliminate, I mean, to problems arise to halt the progress of the group and the, and the progress is usually the elimination of white supremacy, us doing better, us getting our stuff together, our whole situation being better. We know what happens when we get together. We try to, we usually get together and with the intention of solving our problems, but we're still here, still trying to get together to solve our problems. So we're going to learn though. And so, he goes on to talk about a codification and the use of logic. Before saying or doing anything, listen now, before saying or doing anything, think about the best possible way of saying or doing what you are doing or what you are going to say or do. Plan for what you say and do to be better than any other way of saying or doing what should be said or done. Use the logic that is part of the universe. Apply the logic for constructive purposes to everything that you say or do in every area of activity. And that's one thing that he has been consistent in talking about in this first part of this book is constructive action, constructive thinking, constructive speech, constructive ways of living. Everything we do has to be constructive. And if it's not constructive, then we're wasting our time. We're fooling ourselves because, like I said last week, it will only go to help the system of white supremacy continue. And we don't want to be no closet white supremacists, right? So every time you have a problem, think about all of the different ways that you can possibly that you can probably solve that problem. And that's what he was talking about in the beginning. And the clip in the beginning, coming up with as many different ways as possible to solve your problems. Study each of these ways and try what appears to be the very best solution to that problem. If the very best of what you try to produce, if 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 the very best of what you try to produce is a constructive res, constructive result, regard that result as the code for the specific problem. Codify everything that you say or do according to compensatory logic. If you codify everything that you do and say and do so with the intent of producing a constructive result, the combined result of the codification is likely to be constructive. Read that again. According to compensatory logic, if you codify everything that you do and say and do so with the intent of producing a constructive result, the combined result of the codification is likely to be constructive. Now, we do get together with the intent of a uh, outcome. I'm not gonna always say it's a constructive result, but I know we we often get together with the intent of an outcome, but one of the things that's missing is codification. We have to be codified. We talked, you saw the clip that we was talking about, uh, Professor Carlton Jones was talking about in the second half of the clip. You know, we had two breakdowns on 
why we need to be codified. And we showed you the codes that we follow ourselves. But of course, we all need the codes that we we can follow as a collective. And Neely Fuller is going to get into that in a different ways. The codes uh, can be followed and should be followed and what works and what doesn't work. So, but codification is needed at the end of the day. Basically what I'm saying, codification is needed. And until we do that, we won't have any real progress. When everything seems to be working against your efforts to, re to replace racism, white supremacy with justice balance between people, be persistent and continue to focus on that goal. Justice, 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 right? Justice. Continue to study anything and everything that may be of constructive use and best helping to produce the goal. Feed our minds and our souls and our body with nothing but constructive stuff. I started back working out. I started back working out because it's part of being constructive. Like every area of our lives has to be on the up, on the up and coming. We got to, we we have to be the best version of ourselves in every area of our lives. Every area. It's it's a part of being codified. It's a part of being codified. Truth, justice, righteousness, health, wellness, well-being, all of that. It's a part of being codified. The more codified we are, the healthier we will be. Think about that. The more codified we are, the healthier we will be. Continue to use your spiritual motivation to help you find the logical and the absolute best way to say and do everything that should be said and done. All right. So he goes on to talk about facts about the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. So now he's breaking down what the United Independent Compensatory Code concept is. So for all those who want to know what it is, you about to know exactly what it is. Hey, my man, what it is. That was from The Last Dragon for all my Last Dragon fans. So united means the victims of racism, non-white people who choose to be united are united in regards to their thoughts as to the need to resist and or eliminate racism, white supremacy. And once again, that's what united means. United means that the victims of racism, non-white non -white people who choose to be united are united in regards to their thoughts as to the need to resist and or eliminate racism, white supremacy. Day. Remember, they're united in their thoughts. Put a pin in that, being united in your thoughts. Independent means that each and every individual victim of racism is at all times, in all places, in all areas of activity, independent in regards of his or her choice of methods used to resist. This is important. You are independent in your own methods that are used to resist, right? And or eliminate racism, white supremacy. This means that no person, white or non-white, has the just or correct authority to force and or command any victim of racism to adopt any means of speaking and or acting against racism other than the means of the individual victim chooses for him or herself. All right. Can't tell nobody how to fight racism, basically what he's saying. It's on them to find the best way for them to write, to fight racism. And that's how I know we've been studying right in the past because this is you no know, my first time getting into this book but you know we've always said that in the past and i've always said that use your gifts to fight racism use your gifts my paths and i'm gonna say this again later on in the video but my paths i'm fighting racism through education and through the areas of activity through education and sex those those the paths those two paths that i'm choosing to fight through teaching black history and doing HIV AIDS prevention within the black community. All right. So compensatory means to make up for that which is missing, namely the revelation of truth and the use of truth in such a manner as to promote the production of justice and correctness. Justice and correctness is missing among the people of the known universe because the non-white people are dominated by and or tolerant of the races. It is the races who, in order to maintain the practice of racism, have produced the greatest and or most effective system of promoting falsehood, non-justice, and incorrectness in the known universe. Code means that each individual victim of racism speaks or acts to help eliminate racism by utilizing selections from a list of suggestions, as he was saying in the beginning clip, 
from or from a combined list of suggestions designated to help an individual victim of racism accomplish that purpose. What it was talking about in the in the beginning, coming up with the best ways, with the best solutions, coming up with the list of the best solutions that you can use and go on with the best solutions. System means that each individual victim of racism speaks and or acts to help eliminate racism. Hold on, let me turn my page. According to the part of a pattern of certain forms of speech and or action suggested in a kind of listing, a code from any victim of racism can pick and choose as he or she, as he or she sees fit. When many victims of racism pick and choose to speak and or act against racism from the same general pattern and or code at a time and place of their choice as individuals, a system of speech and action becomes self-produced. I'm going to read that one more time. System means that each individual victim of racism speaks and or acts to help eliminate racism according to that part of a pattern of certain forms of speech and or action suggested in a kind of listing of codes from which any victim of racism can pick and choose as he or she sees fit. When many victims of racism pick and choose to speak and or act against racism from the same general pattern and or code at a same at a time and place of the choices individuals a system of speech and action becomes self-producing all right concept concept means that the entire united independent compensatory code system is no more than a concept or idea during a period when no person in the known universe is speaking and or acting to use truth in a manner that helps produce justice and, and correctness. So the United Independent Compensatory Code is produced to, is created to produce justice and correctness. And once again, when you're following that code, everything, everything should get better. Everything should improve for us when we're following that code. And we're because we'll be fighting white supremacy in a correct and productive manner rather than the incorrect and unproductive manner that we're fighting it in now, going around in the hamster wheel, like uh, PC said, we're going around in that hamster wheel because we're fighting it incorrect because we're not following the code. So he says the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept works in the following manner one, it provides ideas for speaking and or acting to eliminate racism and for producing justice and correctness and are list and are list as they come to mind so whenever you get ideas of producing justice and correctness you got to list them down the list of ideas is to, is arranged in an order a code of thought speech and or action that is designed to be used by an individual person and he underlined individual person the individual person uses parts of the code that he or she judges to be best for promoting the production of justice and correctness and eliminating racism. The individual person does this by his or her own will at a time and place of his or her own choosing in any one or more listed areas of people activity, namely economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, war, and kind of war. And once again, I said, I choose the areas of education and sex, education, teaching my black history, teaching life skills and and teaching sexual education and safe sex education, which also bleeds over into the world of sex, teaching sexual education and safe sex education. Right. So there is no one person who is the leader of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. So this, this is this is what I was learning. Though. So let's open our minds. All right. And if you already knew this, I ain't, you know, I'm not trying to be condescending, but I'm just saying for those of us who just learning this, let's open our minds up for this, right? There's no one person who is the leader of the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept. Each person leads himself or herself each minute of each day and night according to what he or she has chosen from one or more parts of the code that he or she has judged to be of constructive value. You being able to use your gifts and your talents on your journey and your path to fight the system of white supremacy. You don't have to fight it the way I fight it. Don't try to fight white supremacy the way I fight white supremacy. Find your way of fighting white supremacy. If you teach people how to eat healthy, 
Well, guess what? You're fighting the system of white supremacy, which feeds us the products, the food, and the information for us to, to encourage us and to program us to be unhealthy. And we take the actions, which is our portion of the of the blame, we take the actions to be unhealthy. All right? So don't fight white supremacy the way I fight it. Fight it the way you fight it. And let's support each other in the way we're fighting white supremacy, right? It is just and correct for any person, white or non-white, to speak and or act in support of the compensatory code. White people can help by giving and or by giving and not withholding any information that is of constructive value. Everything that each white person does that is of constructive value should at all times include at least three non-white people functioning as persons of equal value and receiving equal benefits. So whatever way white people want to help us, first of all, they can start by giving up all the details and all the information and whatever they receive and value. Hey, three, three non-white people function as persons of equal value and receiving equal benefits from what the white person has received. If they really want to help stop the system of white supremacy, because remember, it is, is about the unequal distribution of land, wealth, power and resources. Right. That's a part of it as well. White supremacy. Oh, well, let me let me finish reading this. The basic author of the compensatory code system concept is the law of compensation itself. He, and Neely Fuller saying he's just a conduit, but the basic author of the compensatory code system concept with the law is the law of compensation itself. It is the existence of white supremacy, racism, and other forms of non-justice and incorrectness that authors or authorizes the existence of the compensatory code. Because if white supremacy didn't exist, if the system of injustice didn't exist, a compensatory code wouldn't have to exist. So by nature, the system of white supremacy is the author, it's the original author of the compensatory code. And Neely Fuller and those of us who are fighting the system of white supremacy are just conduits to the compensatory code. All right. Uh, what was I? I did lost my place. Okay. However... What one person says or does that pertains to the compensatory code should not be confused or intermixed with what another person says or does. This is to keep pure the united independent factor of the compensatory code system concept. It's about you, the individual, the independent individual, but we're all working under a united code. Individuals working under a united code. Individuals working under a united code. Yes. That's the best way for me to understand. That's why I'm saying it like that, because it's clicking. My wheels are turning. It's clicking with me, too. Hey, it's, it's individuals being united under a code, not being united by a group, not being united by a label, not being united by a name, not being united by none of that. But you're being united by an independent, by, by individuals being united by an independent code concept. Make great sense. White supremacy breeds opposition to white supremacy. Non-justice breeds opposition to non-justice. Incorrectness breeds opposition to incorrectness. This is the law of compensation. So it also goes on to say two basic methods of resisting racism, white supremacy is four wall ism and open air ism. And we're about to learn some of the pros and cons of four wall ism a a method that is used to white to fight white supremacy and open wall is open air um the open air method we're going to use we're going to learn about the pros and cons of both of them but let me drink some real quick so the four wall method is the standard and or traditional method used by victims of white supremacy racism it is called the four wall method because the non-white people who use this method generally plan, talk, and try to inspire each other by meeting each other regularly in a building space that has four walls. The walls may be of stone, wood, wire, or some other structure. And now that you can include the internet in that four wall uh, method. The effectiveness of the meetings and the accomplishment of their purpose is oftentimes judged on the basis of the number of people that appear within the walled area at that same time. 
If the same people assemble often enough, they are usually asked or expected to assemble regularly. They may be awarded a name or a title and told that they are members of an organization of people. The structure, building, etc., where the members meet is usually considered to be the headquarters or central meeting place. The total number of people who appear regularly at that particular place oftentimes measure the power of the people attending the meetings at this headquarters. These people who appear regularly are usually expected to contribute money, socialize, and use names and or titles that are that are associated with that particular assembly of people at that particular place of assembly. All right. In a world of socio-material system dominated by white supremacy racism, the four-wall method of resisting white supremacy has the following weaknesses. So Oftentimes, many of the most affected people who attend counter-racist meetings do not intend to help eliminate racism, but are sent and or financially assisted by the racist white supremacists to work to defeat the purposes of the meeting, i.e. the COINTELPRO already there from the beginning. That's one weakness. It's it's when you're working behind enemy lines, the enemy is always working to keep you down. So uh, to suppress anything, remember, they're still about the suppression of the rise of the black messiah. So the Cointel Pro is going to be a standard part of, or the, even in the early stages of sending people in who don't have the intentions that you have. When money is collected, much of it is used for purposes other than the elimination of racism, right? Because they go to the day-to-day stuff. Oftentimes, too much time, energy, and money is spent trying to maintain the four walls on regular structures or places where the people assemble to talk about what they should or should not be doing to accomplish their goals. Keyword, still talking. Power is too often judged on the basis of the number of people who attend a particular meeting and or on the basis of how crowded a particular walled structure was at a particular time. Squabbling is usually increased as the number of people attending these meetings increase, usually because of the production of personality clashes. Those who are lax in attending meetings and or those who are not considered members of the organization are generally treated as unimportant, uncooperative, and or as outsiders. Promoting the appearance of being substantially effective against racism and white supremacy without being substantially effective against racism and white supremacy. I'm going to read that one more time because that he, he killed it on the last part. Promoting the appearance of being substantially effective against racism without being substantially effective against racism. That's one of our biggest problems. Too many posers, too many people out there trying to look like they are effective against white supremacy. But we still wonder why we have no forward progress because they're not effective. So the open air method. The open air method of resisting racism and white supremacy is practically the functioning opposite of the four wall method. The open air method is generally characterized by informal communication and or association, no regular meetings, no renting or buying of meeting halls or buildings, no repeated fundraising activities, no formal acquisition and storage of supplies to be distributed and or sold for support of organizational activities, no payment of organizational dues, no payment of salaries, no designated leadership, no designated fellowship, no thought, speech, and or action that is denied, that is dictated by one person or a special designated group of persons. In a world socio-material system dominated by racism, the open air method of resisting white supremacy has a basic weakness. It is initially difficult to communicate the idea of counter-racist code to all the victims of racism, white supremacy, um, in a manner that effectively motivates all for most of all or most of them to think, speak, and act according to the suggestions of that code. It is true that most of the time, most non-white people are self-motivated to, t- to take effective action against racism only out of immediate desperation. This is one of the major weaknesses of the open air method of resisting racism and white supremacy. And once again, the open air method, one of the major weaknesses is everybody won't buy into the open air method. Everybody is not going to support it. Everybody won't follow it. So it has to be a critical mass who are following 
uh, who are creating these compensatory codes and who are following these compensatory codes, right? It has to be a critical mass of people who are serious about it and they are actively doing it and they have uh, real results and effective results. And um, then the people who jump on after something happens to them. So one thing I always tell people is stop waiting on bad things or even racism or whatever. Stop waiting on stuff to knock on your front door before you take a stand against it. Take a stand against injustice anyway. Get out there and get active in your community and stand up and fight for things anyway, whether they affect you immediately or not. Don't wait on these things to knock on your doorstep. Don't become an activist after your life has changed. Change your life early. Get active early. Don't wait on tragedy. Beat tragedy to the punch. Get out there and be active and fight injustice. Fight fight the ills of the of the community fight the ills of the world but be codified in the way that we're doing it so there's a compensatory repair process some of the basic and correct things to do when seeking to repair the damage to non-white people caused and or promoted by the establishment maintenance expansion and or refinement of the system of white supremacy and these things are as follows Find the truth about the harm done to non-white people as the direct and indirect result of the establishment, maintenance, expansion, and refinement of the system of white supremacy. Learn everything about white supremacy and how it affects us negatively in all areas of white supremacy so we can effectively understand it and give up the, and, and that will give us the effective tools to come up with the ideas to fight it in an effective manner for real results. Replace the system of white supremacy racism with the system of justice balance between people by using a compensatory counter racist code of thought, speech and action that is specifically designed to repair all of the damage done to non-white people as a direct or indirect result of the system of white supremacy. Continue to repair, continue the repair process until there is no longer any damage to be repaired and or compensated for that pertains to all areas of activity, including economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, counter war. As a major part of the compensatory repair process, speak and act to guarantee correct and constructive education, housing, transportation, and healthcare to each individual non-white person who is or has been directly or indirectly victimized by the system of white supremacy. Continue to guarantee that these necessities are provided until all persons so victimized are constructively self-supporting in all areas of activity until they are no longer able to be self-supporting or until they die. Basically, a part of the repair process is getting our stuff together. Getting our stuff together is a part of this repair process. If we don't get our stuff together, we will never be able to properly repair ourselves. And so he also goes on to say, to those who have shown an interest in the codification process of replacing the system of white supremacy and racism with the system of justice, the United Independent Compensatory Code System concept is an open air view of problem solving, addressing the individual person only. And that's one of the things I was thinking about earlier when I was reading this book, that the independent compensatory code is an open air method, meaning that everybody won't buy into the compensatory code. And some people will adopt the compensatory code because of um, desperation, because of um, something immediate desperation is what I mean to say. Immediate desperation, something that happened to them negatively in their life and that immediate desperation spurred them to adopt the the United, the United Independent Compensatory Code. Now, whether those people will, uh, whether those people have the will to have uh, to to help get effective results, we don't know. We'll find out. But the overall thing about the Compensatory Code is creating ideas. Also, yeah, creating ideas, creating ideas to help us solve our problems. So coming up with lists, as he was stating in the beginning of the video, as I read uh, in the beginning of this section, coming up with a list of ideas, evaluating those list of ideas and using the best of those ideas to help 
us solve our problems. Until we start doing that, we're going to keep going in the hamster wheel. Under the code, no non-white person is allowed to be so-called structurally associated with anything except the total fluidity of the concept itself as addressed to the individual person united with codified logic. There is so called there is no so-called unity of person to person. It's all about being united under a code and following the code. The, the unity comes in the code. Being codified, that's the unity. Us all being united under the code. The entire concept functions through thought, speech, and or actions of individual victims of racism, white supremacy, only never through any so-called groups. The concept is never ever associated with any so-called group organization or so-called personal leadership. The only structural association that any person can have is with the words written or spoken about the concept, book, papers, or exchange of views. The reason for this is for is for greater clarity and focus by the individual person who is duty bound to stand by his or her work. This means presumably that each individual person has the same duty to stand up, to stand by his or her work only and only as an individual person. It's on us as individuals to be the greatest versions of ourselves and be codified and, and be united under this code. We all have to be strong links in the chain. This indicates that the concept applies to each individual person when he or she is functioning in unity with constructive logic and is identified as being associated with constructive logic, not with people, groups of people or with gathered, scattered or conditioned or coordinated personalities. There is no identification by association, guilt by association or so-called credit by association with any person. <clears throat> This helps to promote honesty and helps to eliminate confusion about who is doing what, when, where, why, and how for what the ultimate purpose. Because everybody got a job. Because everybody is on every individual to have to do what they need to do to support the United Independent Compensatory Code and to add to it. This also prevents the white supremacists from doing what they usually do act either for or against so called group labels or group leaders. There are none. There's only a concept in constant motion. The individual unites with constructive logic under the compensatory code. All right. So check this out. This is how this this clip is going to explain why the compensatory code is going to help support. It's, it's going to help support why the compensatory code exists and why a compensatory code needs to exist. So listen to this. The alt right has come a long way. Donald Trump, as a you know, as as a first step towards identity politics, has come a long way. It was a time to be a little outlandish, and so that's why I did that applause line, which was a bit naughty. A people bit naughty. Just, I mean, we're we're, we're talking about uh, people are are Sikh Heiling. We're talking about an ideology that hundreds of thousands of Americans died to extinguish, and, and it's it's a bit of fun. Right. Whenever anyone says that I care about my people, I care about my identity, I want to expand and deepen my identity, the first thing you always hear, and it's become a joke, is, ah, Adolf Hitler, ah, the Ku Klux Klan, ah, the Southern Confederacy. It's these boogeymen that are thrown at any legitimate and genuine movement for identity. And I think at some level, people want to throw them back in the face of it, I mean, the, their attackers. When a journalist writes something that, that, that your guys don't like, it's, you know, a picture of her superimposed in an oven. Mm -hmm. And you can see the concern here. It's pixels and words. And a swastika is just an image. Right. But it's not just an image, man. I, I, I think you know that. I, I, I'm positive you know that. I think you're just trolling. <laughs> I'm not a very good troll. No, look. I, there is a line to be crossed and, and it, to, to a point where I won't defend anyone, and that is any kind of imminent, real uh, physical threat of violence. Despite Spencer's privileged upbringing and lifestyle, his are a politics of victimhood. If you're born in 1978 like I was, or 1988 or 1998, you've experienced being a minority. You've experienced, let's say, uh, undergraduate life where you've gone through some, you know, white guilt indoctrination. You've experienced trying to get a job at a major corporation where you know that their hiring is geared uh, uh, almost totally towards not hiring you. Those who know white nationalism best say that Spencer's message, 
newly packaged for millennials in sharp suits and clever memes, are in fact a very old product. At the heart and at the core of the alt-right, and no matter what they say, it's all about race. Frank Mink is a former neo-Nazi from South Philly. As a youth, he hosted a cable access show called The Reich. By age 18, he was doing hard time for kidnapping and torture, but left the movement shortly after getting out of prison. Every bit of it is about race. It all comes from that. And if you even look deeper, it comes from fear. Fear that the white race is losing this country, fear of the Mexicans coming in. It's all about fear. They're losing something. Remember, in conclusion, because of the codified existence of the system of white supremacy, a compensatory code has to be created or has been created, a compensatory code, a code that compensates for something that's missing. What's missing? Justice, righteousness, right is correctness. That's what's missing. So the compensatory code exists to compensate for the lack of existence or the non-existence of justice. And the compensatory code is constructed to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. The compensatory code exists because the system of white supremacy exists. By nature, the system of white supremacy and by natural law and universal law, the system of white supremacy birthed the a compensatory code, the law of opposites, the law of compensation. If injustice exists, then injustice has to be compensated with something. And that is the code, the codification of the compensatory code. That's what it is. Being united as individuals under an independent code of conduct, a compensatory code that will help us replace the system of white supremacy. That's how we do it. Neely Fuller Jr. be dropping bombs dropping dimes the united independent compensatory codes is the concept a compensatory kind of racist code a textbook workbook for thought speech and or action for victims of racism white supremacy go get your copy go get your copy go get your copy the link is in the bio this was about the code of white supremacy catch y'all later hey man catch the next video catch the next video love y'all